let's consider the following scenario where we have a block on an incline of 30 degrees. We can apply a force to this block and we won't assume this is a nice ideal system that there will be some level of friction. We can specify the mass here. We can also say what the coefficient of friction is. We'll give all of this and the value of this applied force which will be completely horizontal. So what we want to do with this is figure out, okay, in what direction is this going to move and how is it going to move? Will it have an acceleration? How much of an acceleration? First off, we want to then of course consider what are all the forces involved. So I'll put in red all the forces we have. We definitely of course have the applied force of 300 newtons. We will have the weight of the block we should have the normal force acting on the block perpendicular to the incline. Now we know that the friction force ought to be along the slope here, but you might wonder, okay, should that force be pointing upward or downward? And friction is always trying to prevent motion between two surfaces. So first imagine if there were not friction, which way do you think this block would move? I've given a force here of 300 newtons that is quite large, so that you would expect that if you applied that force to this, it would overcome the only force that's going down the slope here, a component of the weight. That weight component should be less than whatever component of this force is going up. So it should be the case that you would expect this thing to go up the slope. If I had a much smaller force, then I might slide down the slope. But in the case that it's going up, you expect then that the force of friction to be pointing downward, trying to prevent this th uh, block from moving upward. So we've now basically set up a free body diagram and I've already chosen a tilted coordinate system so that way our acceleration is completely in the x direction and in the y direction, this thing won't be able to even move up and down, so it'll definitely have zero acceleration in the y direction. This will make it possible then for us to easily work out what will be a few important things. One is that we need to know what the normal force is in magnitude. Why? Because we know that the force of friction, specifically here it's going to be kinetic friction, is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. And let me get my notation consistent with what I have here, F sub n. So the larger the normal force, the greater that friction force will be. So we definitely have to figure out what is the magnitude of the normal force, and it will not simply be the weight of the block. After all, you expect that this slope not only has to hold up some component of the weight of the block, but also some of this force is pointing into the block here, so it has to push against that. In the same way, if you push down on a table, the table has to push back on you. So, how are we going to do this? We want to first set up some equations of the sum of the forces, one for the sum of the forces in the x direction, one in the y direction. So I've redrawn the free body diagram to make clear what's going on and also allowing us to see how we want to decompose two of our vectors here. So with this turn coordinate system, the normal force is completely in the y direction, the friction force is completely in the x direction, in this case specifically in the negative x direction. The weight force is going to have a component in the negative x direction and a component in the negative y direction. The applied force of 300 newtons will have also a component, in this case, in the positive x direction and a component in the negative y direction. And these angles here will be the same as the angle of the incline, which I had specified before as 30 degrees. Both those angles there are the same, how much this system has been turned from just pure horizontal. There we go. So we can now use this to set up and figure out what might be the sum of the forces. So to give ourselves a little bit of space, let's first do and look at the sum of the forces 
in the y direction. We see there's only one force that's in the positive y direction, and that's the normal force. And now we're going to have a component of the applied force of 300 newtons in the negative direction. So I'll say we have negative 300 newtons in the y direction. We'll figure out that component a little bit later. And we have a component of the weight in the negative y direction. And again, we'll figure out what that component is in a minute. And since we will not expect there to be any acceleration in the y direction, this thing isn't going to move up and down in the y direction because it's not going to basically push into the ramp or leave the ramp. We know that the acceleration should be zero, and thus the sum of the forces from Newton's second law will be zero. So let's figure out some component stuff then. So we have the x and y components to worry about here. So if we want the y component of the applied force of the 300 newton force, we can then take sine of 30 degrees and do opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite is the y component of the 300 newton force divided by the magnitude of the 300 newton force, which is, well, 300. So we see then that the y component of that applied force using this notation is just 300 times sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 happens to be exactly one half, so that force is 150 newtons. And we can do the exact same sort of thing for the component of the weight in the y direction. So in this case, the x and the y components. In this case then, though you notice that the angle here, the opposite of that angle is x rather than y. So one thing to be careful about, don't always assume that the sine function always goes with um, the y component and the hypotenuse, or cosine always goes with the x component and the hypotenuse. That is not necessarily true. And here's a good counterexample. So if we set that same sort of thing up, we see then that cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, or the y component of the weight divided by the magnitude, the actual weight. And so in that case, then, we see that the y component of the weight using this notation is mg cosine of 30 degrees. Let me give myself a little bit more space to put all of that. Plug that in, and I shall find the value to be should be 85 point, sorry, 84 point 9 newtons of force. So in that case then, from the sum of the forces in the y direction that we did here, we know the y component of the applied force, we know the y component of the weight, so it's now relatively easy to find then the normal force after one step of algebra and then some arithmetic. So let's give ourselves some space to work again and finish up what we were doing up here. So we'll bring our work down here and find that we can solve for the normal force as equal to the y component of our applied force and the y component of the weight. Plug in those numbers and find that the magnitude of the normal force is 234.9 newtons. Excellent. Now that we know what the normal force is, we can use that to figure out what is the magnitude of the friction force. So that's what we did by looking at the sum of the forces in the y direction. Now we can take a look and see what's going on with the sum of the forces in the x direction. So if we were to do that, we have a component, and the only component that's actually in the positive direction, we'll have a component of the applied force of 300 newtons in the x direction, 
and against that we're going to have the x component of the weight because we can see that the x component of our weight force here is going to be down along the slope in our negative direction and of course we have the friction force which is completely in the f direction or the x direction some of the forces here is not going to necessarily equal zero it's going to equal the mass times the acceleration of the block in the x direction so we need to find the magnitude of force and the component of weight component of the applied force and we should be able to solve for acceleration with a little bit of algebra so let's figure out the friction force first we know that it's supposed to be mu kinetic times the normal force and we said that the coefficient of kinetic friction was 0 0.2 so we can just straight up plug that in 0 0.20 if we want to follow the sig figs plug in our value for normal force 234.9 newtons and so we find that the friction force is it's going to be 47.0 newtons so somewhat small compared to some of the other forces involved but we definitely don't want to ignore it all right so what we have left then we have the x component of the applied force which we should expect to be 300 times cosine of 30 degrees rather than sine as before since now we're finding the x component and so that gives us 259.8 newtons and as then for our friend the component of gravity in the x direction let's give ourselves some space to work with that so that the x component of the weight is just going to be mg sine of 30 degrees our mass again was 10 kilograms and so we find that the weight is 49.0 newtons so that's the component of the weight in the x direction so we got lots to play with we can plug all of it into our equation and solve for the acceleration in the x direction so again we'll make ourselves a little bit of space and copy our expression from up there just for simplicity and we can solve for the acceleration now and if we do that we will find that acceleration in the x direction should just be the all the forces added together like that divided by the mass so that would be 259.8 minus our component of the weight 49 minus the gravity the uh, friction force 47 all divided by the mass of 10 kilograms so that was just plugging in all the numbers there and so we should find that the acceleration is a mere oh really should I say a mere <laughs> we have an acceleration of 16.4 meters per second squared so this is actually going to have an acceleration greater than that of the acceleration due to gravity so this thing will be not only going up the incline but it'll be booking it somebody put a pretty good engine behind this block but you can see the sort of procedure you have to do once we have all the forces acting on the body and choosing a coordinate system that's useful with inclined planes it's usually the most simple to use a uh, tilted coordinate system but you take the forces involved split them into their components and then do some of the forces in the y some of the forces in the x and find the information you ultimately are searching for rinse and repeat for any sort of similar problems just like that